Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the start of the next online class on calendars. Glad to have all of you here today. And we'll talk a little bit about calendars today. Here's kind of a preview class of our new class on calendars that will be starting soon. And this is for educational purposes today. The new 19, or 19 2018 calendars class. It'll be a three week class. It'll be Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central. And these will be the dates. So it'll be starting on September 25th, which is a week from Tuesday, right? September 25th, which is a week from Tuesday. It'll go 11 a.m. Central. Uh, these are the six dates. Um, and we skip a week here, only because I will be out in California doing, California and Arizona area doing some seminars. And so uh, we'll go two weeks, skip a week, uh, and then do a third week. And I think sometimes it's good to skip a week, let you absorb the material a little bit more. All classes are recorded and archived, live trades every class that are designed to help you become an options craftsman. Uh, each class is a minimum of an hour, and this is the uh, cost for the three-week class. And the great thing is you can, you know, even after the class, week after the class, three months after the class, if you still have questions on the materials covered at class, you can just send in questions. So even if you can only watch the classes recorded or only if you can watch a couple live and the rest recorded, uh, I think it's still practical because you um, constantly answering questions based on when you watched it. So that's a little bit of the information. As far as, far as calendar class topics, that most of these will probably be covered in class just to give you an idea. We'll talk about single calendars. That's just one calendar. And vehicles like RUT, SPX, those are the main ones we trade in liquid stocks, stocks that trade a lot of options. Uh, we'll talk about double calendars. Uh, SPX would be the main vehicle we use. Um, but we also rut in some liquid stocks. So we'll talk about the differences there. When would you do single? When would you double calendars? And, and then we'll also talk about a lot short-term calendars. I'll define them as the shorts are 3 to 15 days from expiration. And then long-term calendars where the shorts are 30 to 45 days from expiration. But every calendar methodology and some of the more successful ones we use in the community, every one will give you our four-step risk management plan on every calendar methodology. How do we set it up based on the current market conditions? What's the profit target and max loss? When do we adjust and how to adjust? Which adjustments should you use? Which out of the possible number of adjustments? I'm going to have an example of something like this today, but using weeklies, to control Vega risk with calendars. Ever since the advent of weeklies, four or five, whatever, six years ago, calendars are a much less risky strategy from a volatility point of view than they've ever been. Uh, because you can, for your long option in a calendar, you could buy it one week out, four weeks out, two months out. You just have a lot more flexibility with calendars. So I think calendars are one of the safest and most conservative strategies out there now, by far, because you can use, you can control your volatility risk with the weeklies. Uh, directional calendars, when will we use those? Is it better to put on directional call calendars or put calendars? Why might it be better to put on directional call calendars as opposed to put, I mean put calendars as opposed to call, or when would we put these on and how to trade directional call calendars, they're going to have a different four-step risk management plan than a non-directional calendar. And, 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 of course, at the beginning, we'll talk a little bit of foundation. Why is this a good strategy for weekly and monthly income and all that? We'll talk quite a bit on calendar adjustments and which ones to use, but which ones to use in certain market conditions. I'm going to give an example of one today, but how about cheap stock calendars? Uh, what would be cheap calendars? Would be you know, something that might be 30 to 75 cents. How do you trade those? 
right? I mean, obviously, if you trade SPX or RUT, they're not cheap stock calendars because you're dealing with expensive vehicles. So how do we trade these cheap ones? Are they any good? Campaign calendars. These would be more, these are an interesting strategy and they have a lot of flexibility. You know, you're going to sell, you know, sell a short term, maybe a shorter term call, 30 days or under, and you might buy something a year out, year and a half. And then how do you trade that? Um, how do you trade that? When do you trade it? How do you trade it, you know, in some of the flexibility? How do you turn it into maybe a, a long diagonal or bullish trade as the market's moving up? You know, what, how do you, what do you do on the downside? And so that's an interesting, and we do it different than, than uh, a lot of the teaching out there may be just you're going to roll the short every week or every month to pay for some of the long. I don't do it like that uh, necessarily. Um, do it a little bit differently. I'm trying to make money every month, not just pay for my long over time. What, what good does that do? Um, uh, ratio calendars, when you might buy two longs and sell one short. Talk about that. And some of these are very strategic calendars that you'd use in certain market conditions. Other methodologies are ones you could do every week or every month. And then managing calendars by the Greeks. How just to look at, you know, what does it mean your delta, gamma, theta, or certain numbers and what would be ideal Greeks? And, and depending on certain market conditions, what should the Greeks be? You know, VIX is a little higher. What do you want your deltas to be? All right, so we're going to talk about that. High octane calendars. These would be more I do a uh, calendar where maybe my short option expires in two days. Um, when would I place these types of trades? And then contrasting calendars and butterflies. Let's face it, they both have graphs very similar to that, right? If this is your P&L line, what's the gist? Which one is better? When would you trade one versus the other? And they're very similar uh, strategies. Um, then we'll talk a little bit, as always, a plan. If you had a $20,000 calendar plan to bring in 2000 per month, how would I set that up? Uh, VIX or RVX considerations when trading calendars. How do I use the VIX or RVX to tell me when would I put on certain types of calendars? And when to scale calendars? So when, you know, if I'm using $20,000 for calendars or 10000 when would I only put a third of my capital to work? When would I put all of it to work? And we'll talk about the market conditions and what metrics I would use for scaling. And calendar execution, how to get the best fill when you're trading these. And, and we'll talk, you know, it'll be very practical. We've been doing calendars in our community for years, and we'll talk about, you know, 2017 or 18, when they were better, what market conditions did they work real well, and how did we trade calendars in the last couple of years? And then pre-earnings calendars, as we're coming up to October, not that far away, how to set up calendars where you basically have no volatility risk, or very little in trades, and you can do it four times a year. We're going to talk about these pre-earnings calendars. So. A lot of interesting things, up-to-date topics and calendars. It'll be should be a really good practical class, and uh, and we'll put examples of you know most of the methodologies we'll talk about. We'll put on a live trade, follow it from beginning to end, show you how we do the four-step risk management. And you know, anybody can put a live trade on. Doesn't mean anything. You could have cooks from Chipotle put on a live trade, but if there's not going to be a plan and show you how to walk through the trade from beginning to end and what's my profit target, what am I going to adjust, how am I going to adjust, how am I going to set it up depending on risk management, it's useless. So that's what we're going to try to do and help make this practical so we'll be covering, you know, different types of calendars. All right. So that's just kind of a little bit of preview, and today we'll just talk a little bit about calendars in general. Uh, SPX was around 28.98 when I took this slide up nine. 
within spitting distance of the all-time highs of 29.16, about 18 points away. Where's SPX right now as we speak? Where is SPX right now as we speak? 29.03? All right, so we're, we're getting closer, right? to the all-time high. Now we're within 13 points of the all-time high in the history of civilization. And, and so we'll talk about that a little, you know, a lot during the class, how to match the market conditions. You know, if we're looking at SPX, the price levels of SPX, the VIX levels, the speed of the movement, how big are the candles, how, 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 how fast is it moving to determine the setup, the proper Greeks, which type of calendar, which duration. We're pretty high levels. VIX is 1269. And, uh, you know, when we've been near all-time highs before, or, or just all-time highs at the moment, you know, whatever, obviously the all-time highs two years ago were different than the all-time highs now, but, you know, VIX is 1269 is low, but, you know, if you look at October, November of 2017, VIX was in the tens, right? So we got a little bit of room we could go here, but I think the reason to me VIX is not at 10 or 11 is because I think there's some anxiety about, you know, we are at these levels. And uh, again, September what? Historically, it's September, if you look back since 1945, I think they had an article in the Wall Street Journal the last week or so, is September generally an up month or a down month in the market? Is September generally an up month or a down month in the market? Yeah, down, underperforming, yeah. And, and again, I don't know what it's going to do any more than you guys do, but obviously there's some concern, and that's why VIX is, is not at 10 or 11. It's still relatively low, but in October and November of 2000. Uh, seven, 2017, SPX was lower and VIX was lower, right? So here SPX is higher and VIX is higher than it was in October 2017 or so. Anyways, let's look at a couple calendars. Here would be an example of a, Kevin says, but does better during a midterm election year like now? Okay, good point. Kevin was saying, well, the market can do better during a midterm election like year, uh, year like now. And, and, I mean, there's so much things going on politically or all this kind of stuff going on that could affect the markets. Here's an example of a 15-day SPX calendar. And we'll cover uh, short-term ter short -term calendars in the class. Short-term could be defined as where your short options are 3 to 15 days from expiration. That would be a short term. Because you can't say weeklies are short term, right? Weeklies could be long term and short term. You can do a 50 day weekly option, can't you? So here's an example on SPX I took when we were at 2897 in the SPX, I don't know, an hour ago, a little more. And so you try to go at the money, but if we're kind of between strikes, I'll go one strike, I'll go usually. I'll go to the strike up, right, because it's a long Vegas strategy. I'd rather lean a little bit long delta when I'm long Vega because as the market goes up, volatility could go down. So it gives me a little bit of cushion. Um, if the price goes up, I get a little bit of benefit from delta with the potential risk of losing a little bit of money on, on volatility. So I set my – strike at the money, generally with these calendars, unless I have an opinion. And you make your money in calendars. In this example, I'm buying one Oct 12, 2,900 put, selling one SEP 28, 2,900 put. And the way you make money on calendars, the reason that the P&L is up at expiration, this is the expiration graph in green, and purple is the graph today, today, how does the graph of this look today? And this is how the graph looks in 15 days, which is the expiration of your short option. Your long option is 29 days from expiration. Your short is 15 days from expiration, but I'd call this a 15-day calendar. 
we label it off of the short because you know, we're going to be out by that. And so the way you make money on these things theoretically is as you stay near the short strike or anywhere near it uh, over time, your shorts at the monies, you're at the monies are going to have the most time premium. They're going to decay a lot quicker than your October 12s will because SEP 28 is shorter expiration than Act 12. So theoretically, if we closed right at 2900 at expiration on an investment of $860, that's why I'd say, hey, if we closed right at the bullseye at 2900 at expiration, we'd make about $1,000, you know, over 100%. Why? Well, because whatever you sold the 2900s for in the SEP 28, those would go to zero, and these would still hold value because in 15 days, they'd still have a couple of weeks left, right? Now, is that realistic that we can hope this closes at 2900 at expiration? Yes or no? And make over 100%. Is that realistic assumption that we can bank on this closing at 2900 and make over 100%? No. That it'd be like, I'm not going to say it's winning the lottery, probably better odds than winning the lottery, but... You're never, as Dino said, never happened for him and never happened for me. And so, and and for many reasons, we don't let it go to expiration. In calendars, you get probabilities in your favor by by being in the trade less time than the expiration. Um, and, and, and that's something we'll talk much more in uh, detail in the class, but uh, that's a point. Um, so anyways, this is the graph today in purple. The green graph is at expiration. And that purple graph kind of morphs into the green one over time. A question says, what ratio of, so here's a question, what ratio of delta to vega do I recommend in this environment? when VIX is 15 or VIX is around 18 and up? First of all, okay, so the question is, do I put any significance on the ratio of delta to vega? Do I recommend a delta to vega ratio? And, and in, in different environments, what would I recommend that ratio? Here's the answer. I don't even look at, I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the delta. I'm aware of the vega. I don't look at the delta vega. I don't see that much significance uh, as far as the ratio, right? I'm very concerned about the vega on a calendar. And so the VIX levels are important in de determining if I do a calendar and 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 how much vega I want to be and the deltas, but I don't really look at a delta to vega ratio. In other words, based on VIX, based on VIX and where the SPX is, I may want to start my deltas either long or short, but I don't really, I don't really find that much practical significance with a delta vega ratio. Now, will I talk about in the class a delta to theta ratio? I will. Does that have some value? It does. Can the delta theta ratio be a help when the trade is going against you or when you probably need to adjust? And yes it can have some significance. Can delta theta ratio, you know, if you have a short-term trade, are there, you know, what should the delta theta ratio be? Or if you have a, so short-term defined as 3 to 15 days, or if you have a longer-term 30 to 60-day calendar, what should be the delta the theta ratio? What happens when your delta the theta ratio changes during the trade. What can they tell you? That's something we'll talk about. But I don't see, Dave, too much significance 
of a delta vega ratio. Is the VIX a big consideration when I look at calendars? Yes. Will the level of VIX, the level of SPX, be a determinant in how I set up a trade? What I want my deltas for in a calendar? Yes. But that delta to vega, just that ratio in itself, no. So this is a 15-day calendar, and you can see your delta to theta ratio on a on a calendar like that, you know, your short-term delta to theta ratio on a, or theta to delta ratio on a seven, three to 15 day trade, you know, could be from 10 to one to 16 to one. That's pretty normal, where your theta in this case is almost 13 times bigger than your delta. But if this were a 40 day trade, your delta to theta ratio, your theta might only be two, two and a half times bigger than your delta. It doesn't mean it's worse or better, right? They're just different trades. You know, to me, trading a three to 15 day calendar is a totally different strategy than trading a 30 to 60. But, I, you know, I said this before and I'll say it again. I think calendars right now are one of the most conservative, best, flexible strategies in the universe. Dan, why do you make such a crazy statement? Because I believe it? Why do you believe it? Because since weekly options started about five, six years ago, the thing they benefited most is calendars. Dan, why? Five or six years ago, if you did a calendar, right, I'd have to do a 30-day versus a 60-day, right? Or, or is the or is the 30-day went lower, maybe a 15-day versus a 45-day? In other words, five six years ago, could I do a 30-day option versus a 37-day option? Could I do a 30-day option versus a 45-day option? Can I do a 30-day option versus a 50? Did I have the flexibility before weeklies? Yes or no? Did I have the flexibility before weeklies to control the vega of my calendar by putting my longs as close as I wanted to the short or as far as I wanted any time? Well, here's the answer. No, I never had that flexibility. So I think... Um, I'm going to show you in this example, this is a 15-day calendar, right? The $860 calendar, and this is my volatility risk. And what, what this is saying is if the option volatility, so the volatility of my long option is 8.61, and the volatility of my short option is 8.11 in SPX. Okay. Let me ask you a question. I would call that, so those are the volatility of my two options that I did today. This was my long, and this was my short. I paid an 8.61, sold an 8.11. I would call that a negative skew when the volatility of my short is less than my long. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad to do a calendar where the volatility you're buying is more expensive than the one you're selling? Is that good or bad? I'm buying an 8.61, selling an 8.11. Anybody other than Dave? We get a normal, we get a couple bads. I'm buying an 8.61 and selling an 8.11. Not as good, I'd like to sell high vol. Let me ask you a question. Where did you get that thinking? Where did you get that thinking that it's better, you know, well, I guess from a, from a basic level, right? You hear the concept, sell high, buy low, buy low, sell high, buy low. Buy. But in a calendar, let me ask you a question. In a bullish market, which we've had, since most of you have been three years old. I'm joking, we've had a bull market for eight years. 
this negative skew, that's as normal as you're going to get, right? Right? That's normal, right? Let me say this in Spanish, a little bit of Somalian, and a little bit of French. That's not bad. It's normal, right? That's normal. When you have a market, an uptrending, bullish market, you're going to have, especially if you're, you know, 90% of the time, especially depending on the duration, you're going to get, it's normal that the ones you're buying are going to be more expensive than the ones you're selling. What is that called? Does anybody know what the word, there's a fancy word for that. What's the word when the volatility of your long options, further out duration, is more expensive than the short term? Yeah, it's something they do in Argentina, right? Right, the contango, right? Don't they do that in Argentina, the contango? And it's normal. Now, you could say, you know, for a 15-day calendar where you're selling a 15-day call and or put and buying a 29-day, so, well, what's the normal negative skew? And you want to be aware of that, and you can be aware of that by tracking the volatility. But, but think about what you guys said you like, right? There were four or five of you that said, I want a positive skew. Remember you guys said that? Let's think about, right? So you want to buy an option that's cheaper than the one you're selling, right? But let me ask you a question. What type of market environment is going to give you an atmosphere or a weather condition where you can do calendars, where you're buying a option with lower volatility than the one you're selling generally. Yeah, highly, so the market's going down fast, and it's really moving. So the price movement, let me ask you, in that situation, when the market's really falling fast, is that price condition good for a calendar that wants it to stay at the short strike? Let me ask you that. You know, you got to be careful, right? Do you agree? You got to be careful about, you know, that's like looking at something with horse blinders on, right? I get a positive skew, but from a price conditions, that stinks. Generally, is it really going to, with the market falling, is it suddenly going to sit there at your short strike? You know, so I'm just saying you got to keep that into perspective. Anyways, let's move on. So here's a 15-day calendar. The Vega is 89. That means if the volatility of my long option and the volatility of my short option were to each go down one point or go up one point, I make or lose $89. So if the volatility of my long option, which is this, goes up a point, and the volatility of my short option goes up a point, and they usually don't go up in tandem like that, but this is a theoretical number, and I'm just explaining what the vega means. It's saying if my long goes up a point, my short goes up a point, I'm going to make theoretically, that's what it says, theoretically, not reality, but theoretically about $89. How does that happen? Because I'm buying the one with the most time premium, the further out option. I'm selling the one with a little bit less time premium. So if the volatilities, if each of these options goes up a point, the one I buy is going to make more than I'm going to lose in the one I'm selling because I bought more time premium, that bigger time premium, it's going to go up by more. And conversely, if the volatility of my long and short goes down a point, from where their volatility levels are, I'll lose about $89. Why will I lose $89? Because I bought the one with more time premium, and so I'm going to lose more on the one I bought than I'll make on the one I sold if the volatility goes down. But if you see, this is about an $860 trade. My volatility risk is $89. And here's that I'm spending a little bit more, but I have less volatility risk in a 43-day calendar. 
Does that make sense? Wouldn't most of you think that a 43-day calendar would have more volatility risk? Wouldn't you? I'm spending more money and I have less volatility risk. And I've gone out from 15 days to 43. Wow. Remember what I said that about five, six years ago started to me a revolution in calendar trading? Why? You have flexibility with the weeklies. Right? No, the reason that I'm spending more money and I'm getting less volatility risk on a 43 day than a 15 day isn't more time. It's because with weeklies, I can go, in this example, my long is two weeks past my short. Whereas six years ago, the only option I have is, okay, my short is 43 days out. I have to buy my long, you know, 73 days out. And that's going to have more volatility risk. But here I'm selling my option at 43 days. I'm buying my long 57 days out. So in a longer term calendar, I actually have less volatility risk here than I do in the previous example. So it's so because more time is going to give you more volatility risk generally in a calendar. But again, that's what I'm saying. It's tremendous flexibility. And look how smooth the T plus zero curve is. It's beautiful. Smooth as a baby's behind, right? So tremendous flexibility with calendars. Tremendous over the last six years. Revolutionary. <laughs> you know, but it is. Right? And but I but you know when you start talking about mixed month spreads, there gets a lot of confusion out there. I see a lot of crazy talk when you get into mixed month spreads. It's easier to at least digest in your head. Okay, I'm doing an iron condor or a butterfly. You know, it's all in the same month. Okay, I can absorb how that I can I can think through how the volatility works. But when you get mixed month spreads, you know, people get a little, you know, I think a little confused with how volatility works in those options. Anyways. So here we have a longer term calendar which Six years ago, a longer-term calendar would have had long, more volatility risk in the short term. But these days, with the advent of weeklies, I can control my volatility risk, right? Dan, are you saying if VIX was 20, you'd have no problem doing a calendar? No problem. None. Dan, if VIX was 30, could you do a calendar? I wouldn't, but I could. I'd have no problem. I'd, I'd have my long, you know, seven days past my short. I'm not concerned, right? Another thing we'll talk about in the class, there's cheapy calendars. Has anybody ever done cheapy calendars? Dan, what's a cheapy calendar? Where you pay like 35 to 75 cents. Has anybody ever done a cheapo calendar? It's just a different type of calendar. You trade it a little bit differently. Um, but here's an example of a 15-day IBM calendar, you know, IBM price chart, you know, if you look over the last two, three months, it's still pretty stable compared to some of the other, other stocks and indexes out there. Obviously, when you do an SPX or a RUT, you know, your calendars are going to be up in the, you know, more expensive. But if you do like SPY, right, SPY or IBM, cheaper dollar vehicles, um, it's going to be cheaper. And and it isn't the same trading a $0.72 debit as it is a $10 debit. So in the cheapo, in this example, I'm buying one act 12, the 148 strike at the money. This is the exploration graph. This is your graph today. And this is your P&L. I'm buying it at the money, selling it at the money where the most time premium is, buying the act 12 about 14 days past my step. 28, the step 28 is 15 days out. My deltas are 0.38 near zero. This is my short gamma, a little bit positive theta, and long vega. 
and I'm paying 72 cents. So for every one calendar, it'd be $72. So we're going to trade this differently, and we'll talk about that in the class. So for example, you know, a lot of times in index calendars, I might look at 7 to 10%. Well, could you make money trading this? Let's say somebody did one calendar and they paid $72, right? I'd do obviously more. You could do 10 for 720. Let's say you did one for $72 and your goal was to make 10%, which is $7.20. With commissions, could you make any money on that? With commissions, would you make much money on these things? No, no. So, so during the class, we'll talk about how, what's our methodology and game plan for trading cheapos, right? I think they're a good, I think they're a good strategy. I really do. I mean, because there's a lot of stocks in that 90 to 150 level that have a lot more stable price graphs than some of the FANG stocks and uh, even some of the indexes. Um, and so I think because of the price stability, I think there's some good opportunities in these cheapos. And it's just how to trade them, and we'll talk about that. So um, anyways, and then one last one that we'll be talking a lot during the class, I call this an iron condor alternative. Uh, in the fact that the foundation of an iron condor is selling an out-of-the-money call and an out-of-the-money put. And so when volatilities are at a certain level, um, I would rather do these double calendars than an iron condor. And uh, they're in the same family. You're selling out-of-the-money call. In this example with SPX at 2,900, selling a 2,920 call and a 2,875 put, call side 20 points up, put side 25 points down, my shorts are 15 days from uh, expiration, and my longs are 29 in this particular example. But as you can see the expiration graph, there's your P&Ls, here's your graph today, here's the price of the underlying today. So we've got 20 points up, 25 points down, and it's a positive day to trade so you can see here, here's the theta, here's your deltas. So you're over a 10 to 1 risk, 10 to 1 theta over your delta. And, and this has been a big strategy for us um, over the last year. And so we'll talk extensively about when we would put this on, what VIX levels, how we would manage it, adjust it the whole nine yards. And uh, thank you, Dave. Dave's given a little bit of I think testimony, and he's done some of these um, uh, double calendars, and I'm glad they're working for you. Good. And we'll be talking about those. So anyways, folks, I want to encourage you to think about calendars. I think this would be a good opportunity to uh, develop in your bag of uh, profit centers, and that's how I look at any strategy. You know, you want to get a couple profit centers to maybe add up and you know, whether your goal is 2000 a month or 20000 a month or $200 a month, uh, but it's going to consist of two or three different strategies. And, and you have to become a good craftsman at it. And so this is a good opportunity starting a week from Tuesday to become a good craftsman uh, at um, the art of calendars. So look forward to seeing you a week from Tuesday. If you have any questions, you can email me at Dan at SheridanMentoring.com. And folks, have a wonderful day. Thanks for popping in here for the day or for the hour. And we'll see you, uh, uh, as my mother-in-law always say, we'll see you when we see you. We'll see you next uh, week from Tuesday. Again, this will be at 11 o'clock Central we'll be meeting. And that'll be a good time for live trades right in the middle of the day. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks everybody, appreciate it, and we'll see you later.